Right, well here we have the first mini quadcopter stroke drone from the Eye, a technology company in China that are better known for their action cameras. This is the T5E, which is a native 4K action camera, very good camera, but I digress. As I say, this is their first venture into quadcopters. I call it the Dr. X. Some people might be calling it the DRX, I don't know, and I call it the I. So let's see what you get here. Oh, if I can open the box, that's always the first challenge. You get the mini quadcopter, which I must say was smaller than I thought it was going to be, but it looks nicely made, quite light, props are already on. You get the battery, which is a special little battery that actually fits inside, manufactured by the eye. And I'll say at this point, there are two versions of this, the Dr. X and the Dr. X Plus. The Dr. X Plus actually comes with an external charger and two more batteries. Um, and flight time is only eight minutes, so I would suggest it's a good idea to have a couple of extra batteries, because eight minutes goes very quickly. You get a couple of prop guards, you get four spare props, plus this little spanner here, which is to help you get the broken props off. Now what you'd have to do is slip them under that and push up. And you get the manual, written in multiple languages and, just for a change, in very good English. Pretty thorough manual as well. It doesn't go a great deal into the operation of this, but once you download the app and put it on your phone or tablet, there are lots of tutors and lots of advice actually on the app that you can scroll through, um, which tells you all about that. So that's all covered. Right, so first thing you've got to do with this is slip the battery. Now you can see it's got some little slots there, and if you look inside, you can see where the corresponding slots are. So it goes in, so it goes in with that little tag there upwards, because that clicks into that. And to charge it, plug into the USB socket, use a phone charger, a PC or whatever. It does take quite a long time to charge. When it's charging, the blue LEDs on the front flash slowly, and once it's fully charged, they go solid. The other thing you'll need to do is find a micro SD card. It will take up to 64 gig. This is just a 16 gig SanDisk. They recommend class 10. And this goes in, which way? I can't remember. Not that way. It goes in logo side upwards, like so. What else can I tell you about this? Now I mentioned that control is via the Wi-Fi app and on the back of the box here you can see there's a QR code and if you've got a QR code scanner on your phone you can scan that or you can go to the App Store or Google Play and search the I Dr. X. So what else can I tell you about this? It's got built-in camera which records 1080 at 30 frames a second and that is recorded directly to the micro card. At the same time it streams at 720 video the FPV image to your phone or tablet. The quality of the video is very good. The other thing you've got to do is fit the prop guards. Easy enough to clip on. I'd say they probably go that way up. Makes sense. And seeing as how you're more likely to crash it into something, I put them on to the front. Just get hold of that, clip them on, like so. I know it always looks like my hands are shaking. They probably are. It's just this is shaking. So prop guards, which are actually very good. And if you're a beginner at this, you no doubt you will crash. And while I'm mentioning that, I would strongly suggest that your first flights on a day with little or no wind, no people around, and quite a big space. Short grass preferably, so that if it drops out of the sky, it's got an emergency landing button. If it drops out of the sky, you'll be able to see it. So that covers that. Uh, to get the battery out, you've got to flip this little gadget up here and get a thumbnail under. Now, drones in this price range don't have a GPS to maintain position, but what it has got is an air pressure sensor which helps maintain height and also an optical flow sensor which is an amazing bit of technology a little tiny camera looks down at the terrain and maintains position by looking at the texture and the contours and in my test it actually worked exceedingly well and was very stable for a small drone 
but of course I am talking about in conditions with very light winds or even indoors. I'll show you a quick clip of that. So clever little gadget with lots of technology in it for that money and although it's quite light it was remarkably stable when I flew it. Right so let's have a look at the app but before I do that another quick look at the manual. It's a very well written manual. I fully recommend that you read all the safety information, pre-flight checks, it mentions flight conditions. The other thing is you should always know the rules about flying drones in your particular country and obviously you don't fly near airports or lots of people so read the instructions carefully and pick a day with not too much wind. Right so let's have a look at the app. I've installed it on this old Motorola phone which has got Android 6 on it and I've installed it on this pretty ancient tablet that's got Android 4. My current phone which is the Moto G5 which now has Android Oreo won't actually handle this app and that might be a problem with the phone or it might be Oreo but of course with no app you can't control it but Android 6 works fine and no doubt at some point Oreo will work. So to connect what do you do? Now just underneath here apart from the optical flow sensor which I mentioned is amazing you've got the on off button press and hold for three seconds I don't know if you can see that can you see there's a little red light in there and it starts flashing blue at some point there you go it's flashing blue yeah can you see that that means it's waiting for a Wi-Fi signal so go into your Wi-Fi settings and as you can see we've got the eye now I've already installed it and the password for that initial installation is one two three four five six seven eight so connect and I mentioned the problem I had with Android Oreo is it connected and says no internet and it'll pop up and say do I want to connect yes please yes and now open the app the eye And can you see there's some little dots running around there where it said fly and it says the eye is connected. Well unfortunately on my Oreo version it says the eye is not connected even though it says in the Wi-Fi it is connected. Right so where do we start? I do recommend you thoroughly explore all the content of the app. It's a very good app. You've got safety instructions which repeats some of the stuff that's in the manual. Flight emergency which tells you about emergency landing. Press the E button and so on. Settings. Calibration which I showed you before, confirm, put it on level ground, press calibrate, it just wants to know that it's on the level. Come back out of that. Updates, firmware updates if it needs some about us. Now the, it's got some very good tutorials. Flight control, prepare for takeoff, I'll give you an example, takeoff and landing, scroll through these, joystick mode and so on, missions. Come back out of that. Plus also you've got novice must read here which tells you about safety and it also tells you that if you lose your drone it's your responsibility so we strongly recommend users finish the tutorial first as more practice means more fun quite right too okay so let's go into fly Now there are some very important settings here that you should look at before you start flying. First one here you've got is control mode which can either be joystick mode or motion sensitivity. Motion sensitivity means tilt your phone and control its flight movement that way. I prefer joystick mode. You've got rates which they call speed mode, low speed, high speed you certainly if you're a beginner you want to start off with low speed or well, you might find it a bit too lively you've got flight mode now this is important if it's in selfie mode basically the camera is facing towards you so you're kind of flying it back to front most people fly drones where you start off with the drone pointing away from you that's camera away so aerial mode 
And this is also important that you've got joystick habits here, which they call American habits and Japanese habits. Now, American habits is generally referred to as mode two, throttle on the left, whereas Japanese habits is called mode one, and that's throttle on the right. So come out of that, that is pretty important. You've also got the 360, which will turn it, makes it rotate 360, calibration, which I showed you, emergency landing, and of course you've got the takeoff button. Now, if I hit takeoff, the next step would be to turn, slide that across, which I'm not gonna do, and it will just take off and hover about five feet off the ground. And providing you're on a good textured surface, it will hover very well and stay in the same spot using the barometric pressure to maintain altitude and its optical flow sensor to maintain its position. I'm going to turn that off. Once it's in the air, that turns to that button there turns to landing arrow downwards. So I mentioned I've, I've got a rather dodgy thumb here. Unfortunately, I chopped the end off with a model aircraft propeller and had four days in hospital, but it's it's got no sensitivity in the end so it makes it rather difficult for me to use these kind of control buttons but throttle on the left I use that little finger to show you that moves the throttle up and down left right will turn the drone to the left or the right and they're self-centering this one here will make it go forward or backwards or sideways and letting go will let it return to stable flight. In, in fact, if you have a problem, just let go of everything and it will stop and hover somewhere if you lose control, which is very useful. Plus, of course, you've got video on off. As you can see, starts recording, stops recording, or press that click, take a still. I think that pretty much covers everything there. Uh, did I mention that shows the battery state, battery charge, in the drone which is at the moment 70% and that shows the Wi-Fi is connected and you've got a 16 gig card in. Well that just about covers that apart from some flight tests I hope you found this useful if you have why not click on subscribe and the little bell symbol and then you'll get notifications when I upload another video okay so here we go some flight tests Hit the takeoff button, slide across, and it's in the air. Turn it round, and down a bit, there you are. But you can see how remarkably stable that is. It would be easier to operate if I didn't have such fat thumbs. <laughs>